Yaskawa. <lacht> Hi, this is Matt Pelletier with Yaskawa Electric America Technical Training Services and I'm here today to show you not only how to replace a Sigma 5 servo motor when used on an MP2000IEC system but also want to show you what you can do in your program in order to make servo motor replacement a smooth operation. So whether you're maintenance personnel or the programming engineer, I think you're going to find the information in this ELV to be very useful. For the system setup, I have the MP2300 SIEC controller demo, and the training sample program is running. And connected to the left-hand side demo, I have a separate small Sigma 5 servo motor, just with a simple wheel as a mechanical system. And also, I'm connected to the controller through the web page, and I can go to machine operations to see the position. And you notice the axis position is 43 degrees. And even though this is an absolute encoder, I still have a homing routine for uh, calibrating the home position. And so I'll run that now. And you can see that after homing, the position is up and the feedback position is here at zero degrees. And then at some point, maybe due to damage or maintenance or even just shipping the machine you'll have to remove and possibly replace the servo motor. So what should I do? I would recommend that you start with the quick reference guide for the MP2000 IEC series and we'll go to the section on replacing the servo motor. There is some key information here which is that if you have an absolute encoder there will be some special considerations. We'll of course start with the power off to replace the motor, install the replacement, then there's an alarm to clear, alarm A.810 if you have an absolute encoder. Additionally, there is another alarm ACC0 that you may need to clear if you have an absolute encoder. Uh, we'll cycle power when you finish clearing each of those alarms. And uh, then it's very important also to rehome the axis and set the zero point of the system for that axis. So let's start with a physical installation and of course we power off. And now I will very quickly remove the motor and put on a new one. So I've powered up here and you can see that I have the alarm A 81 or A810 because the power supply for the absolute encoder has been lost. Obviously I removed that. It's a completely new motor. It's not going to have the absolute encoder position without that battery power coming through the cable. And so to clear this alarm you simply have to reset the absolute encoder and cycle power. And there are several options for doing this. The recommended solution is to have this already integrated into the project by using the Y absolute encoder function block in your code. Um, if not, there are other ways to do it, such as the web server, which I'll also show. And uh, there are even uh, options through the hardware configuration in the software in Sigma N Plus and using the digital operator. So here is an example of using the Y reset absolute encoder function block in your code. It's very simple and uh, all I have to do is to hit this bit, the G absolute reset left, and I can hit that through my input here, uh, SI0. And so after resetting the absolute encoder, you'll still see the A81 alarm and uh, you know clearing the alarm that's not going to do anything for you you still have A81 you have to cycle power and so after I cycle power I can see now if I refresh this page go back to alarm status that I have no more active alarms and that's it I'm done I'm ready for the next step which is to uh, recalibrate the home position
So you can see here how I've done a very simple implementation of the Y reset absolute encoder function block. However, I would like to point out that we also have a function block to read the access error. So you can detect the specific error A810. You could prompt a user through the HMI to execute this absolute encoder reset. And then when that's done, you could even prompt the user to cycle power. So this entire procedure can be programmed in and really made to be self-explanatory to the machine operator and maintenance personnel. Now, if you have your program and you don't have this functionality already programmed in and you're just trying to get the machine up and running, then I would recommend you go to the web server as your tool and you would go to machine operations, go down to the drive PN tab, you choose which axis it is on the Mechatrolink network, and then here's the button for it right here, absolute encoder init, and you'd click that and confirm. Now, since I'm showing this page, I'll also mention that when you replace a motor with a new motor, you may also need to do a multi-turn reset. You'll do that if you ever get the alarm ACC or ACC0. And ACC0 means that the amplifier has a different multi-turn counter information in PN205 than has been sent to the encoder. Both of those devices need to have the same multi-turn rollover point so that if the motor is off, it knows when to roll over. I'm just going to cancel since I don't have that. And in the very near future, both of these functions will be included in the Y reset absolute encoder function block. So again, it's a very much to your advantage to have the uh, Y reset absolute encoder function block integrated into your code. So now we've got the alarms cleared, but we are not ready for production in our machine yet because the home position has to be recalibrated. And this really is the same whether you're incremental or absolute. Because when I put a new motor into the machine, the machine may have moved the position of the reference pulse on the motor shaft used in homing may have moved uh, relative to the machine. And so it's just critical to home the axis anytime you have an A810 alarm or any time that you have removed the motor. And in fact, we would suggest that you program interlocks in your code that will keep the machine from being able to run after an alarm A810 is detected. And in fact, if I would look at my feedback position right now, it's at 307, and comparing that to the motor, I can tell that that's way off. So for my program, I'm going to start this calibration by uh, homing the motor again. And you can see now this machine says I'm at position zero, but obviously the motor is not at mechanical zero. So ideally you would have a home routine that could be used to find mechanical zero. And if not, you may need to manually find it like I'm going to do now. And so now I have a jog the motor to mechanical zero. And the way my program works, uh, it's calculating the home offset. And on this demo, I'll use input three to recalibrate the home position. So I haven't actually changed the position, but I have updated the home offset. So now if I run the homing routine again, you can see that it does find that home position and calls that position zero. Now absolute encoder motors like this one may have a uh, initial homing that's done on them like I've just done here or it could also use the set position function block to just basically set the position to a, a known position at let's say a hard stop or a sensor and that's just uh, something you do once and then since it's an absolute encoder you don't have to do homing really ever again. 
But again, it's important to go through this home position calibration, calibrating the mechanical position to the motor axis position after you do a motor replacement. Wrapping it up here quick, let me just review what we did. We use a quick reference guide to go through the sequence of uh, powering off, installing the replacement motor, clearing those alarms, either using the Y reset absolute encoder or the web server. Uh, we cycled power to finish clearing the alarms, and then it's very important to recalibrate the home position in the controller. And I hope you'll agree that motor replacement procedure can really be simplified if Yaskawa's programming features are integrated intelligently into the controller program. So again, we encourage you to use the Y reset absolute encoder function block, and also to have some type of homing calibration to mechanical zero built into your program. This way the motor replacement can be completely integrated into your machine and you won't need any software at all. I wish you success in your maintenance and programming of the MP2000 IEC series controllers and I hope that this e-learning video has been helpful to you toward that end. From Yaskawa Electric America Technical Training Services, this is Matt Pelletier.